The soundtrack to Tenet was one of the most high energy big movie scores of 2020. Granted, it was also one of the only big movie scores of 2020, but many people agree that there is something special about this soundtrack, that it has broken new ground. Its breathless, pulsing soundtrack keeps the heart racing for almost the entire length of the film, with barely a moment to rest, but there's much more going on beneath the surface. Often when we're looking at film scores, we're looking for themes or developing leitmotifs that we can attach to characters. And there are themes in Tenet. There's a theme for the protagonist, a theme for Cat. Priya seems to have her own music. There's this hollow breathing sound which follows Sator around, almost like the sonic representation of his own harrowed soul. And there are many other recurring motifs and themes that come up throughout the film, both rhythmic and tonal. But that's actually not what's most interesting about this soundtrack. What's most interesting about this piece is how the composer plays with time. In a film obsessed with the flow of time, it seemed almost inevitable that the soundtrack itself would use time as a tool to enhance the narrative experience. Of course, there are common tools to play with time in music. There's the slowing down or the speeding up of a familiar theme, for example. And Goranson does do that, but he also goes so far beyond that. So let's explore some of the ways in which Ludwig Göransson plays with time in this soundtrack. Number one, of course, is the use of reversed audio. This is the very first thing we hear before the film has even started. We see this title card read first with this music. And then we hear the same thing backwards, now in blue. Why do these reversed sounds feel so unnatural? Take this cymbal crash. You hear the transient first. There's this definite moment of impact where the cymbals hit together and then there's the resulting crash, a chaos of noise. The impact turns order into chaos. But when you reverse this sound, it suddenly becomes unnatural. You start with chaos first and then nothing. Where we should hear that moment of impact, we're left with silence. One way, it's cause and then effect. The other way, it's effect with no apparent cause. These reversed sonic fragments become a part of the musical narrative. We hear them again when we first encounter something inverted. And it comes again at other critical reversed scenes. But it's not just a gimmick. This reversed audio works on a structural level too. You might have noticed a sense of symmetry to the film, that the film starts and ends with a big battle scene. About a third of the way through and a third from the end of the film, there's a fight in the Oslo Freeport. And right at the centre of the film, there's a car chase, first forwards and then backwards. Well, the music has this kind of symmetry too. When Sator first enters the interrogation scene, we hear this motif. A muffled motif in reversed audio. Later in that scene, we hear this music with these notes in guitar. No! One, two, three, here. Okay, okay, the car. The but then we watch the scene back from Sator's perspective. Now we get those same guitar notes in reverse. It's in the clock box. We're going to check this is real. Then when he leaves the room, we get that muffled motif, only now it's louder and played forwards. There is one other key moment in this scene, which I'm going to save for a little later on. But the usage of reversed audio goes beyond that. It can actually help you to navigate the more complex scenes in this film. 
If you felt a little lost in this battle scene the first time round, you're not alone. It could feel difficult to keep track of when we're in a forwards perspective and when we're in a backwards perspective. But actually, the music is there to help you. Every single time we switch to Neil's perspective running backwards, we hear this kind of music. Then, when he switches to forwards, we stop hearing those sounds. Okay, the second way Garanson plays with time is with the dislocation of meter. This score is full of pacey ostinatos, but what makes them so engaging is the irregularly spaced downbeats. You never know when the next one is going to come. Trying to figure out some of the time signature changes can become a mind-boggling exercise. In most popular music, the time signature will be in four, or in some multiple of two. This means that the downbeats will be spaced every two, four, eight, twelve, sixteen beats. It's very natural for us to hear beats in regular groupings like this. It's very easy to count and it feels natural. Most pop songs are in 4, and it's remarkably uncommon to have a pop song even in 3-4 time. Occasionally, some music might break this mould. The Dark Knight Rises often goes into 5, for example. But then, take this track, Trucks in Place. Garanson creates this feeling of rhythmic tension, that you never know when the next beat is going to come. First, there's a bar in 9. And then in 11, a prime number, making it even harder to divide the beats into smaller groups. It makes it so difficult to predict when the next strong beat is going to come. And after 11 comes 10. And all of this brilliantly keeps you on your toes for this amazing drop. What's so special about that drop? Well. The use of a European fire engine siren sounds amazing, but there's something more than that, which leads me to my third point. The moment which should have the biggest impact becomes the point of least impact. Remember that cymbal crash we listened to earlier? It has a point of impact at the beginning of the note, but play it in reverse and that point of impact disappears. And this is an idea explored in the film as well, that depending on which way you look at it, a moment might have an incredible impact, or the end result might be an absence of impact. We hear this musically as well. When we watch cats get reverse shot through the glass, we hear this. It's reversed audio, and the point which should have had the most musical impact when Cat gets hurt has the least musical impact of any of that scene. And yet, when we see her shot from Sator's perspective, we hear it as it's supposed to be. Next one's a bullet to the head. No. What? No. Now the bullet is accompanied by real musical impact. And so it's that messing with musical impact that I think makes this score so exciting, even when it's not directly following the narrative. Normally, when we're listening to this style of music, we are so entrained to hear the main emphasis on the downbeat, on the kicks. We expect that the focus of the beat or the metric accent will be on the strong beats of the bar, the downbeats. This is what happens in the vast majority of music. But to go back to that track, Trucks in Place, when we get this big build up, you expect to then hear a huge kick on the first beat of the bar, but instead, Goranson places least emphasis on those beats, where we expect the most impact 
we get the least. Instead, the emphasis is placed on what would normally be the weaker beats of the bar. It's a complete reversal of where the metric accents should be. You're not dropping the beat, you're catching it. And it makes for a pretty amazing effect. So whether this film score is directly working with the action on screen, or whether it's using time as an effect for purely musical reasons, Goranson has produced something more than worthy of closer listening, as an excellent companion to Nolan's latest mind-boggling thriller. This video is sponsored by Prime Phonic. It's an amazing app for listening to and discovering more classical music. There's exclusive interviews with film composers and other composers, and it intelligently recommends and teaches you more about the music you love. It's become an instant favorite for those who want a dedicated classical service, which is set up to make your experience smooth, fascinating, and full of discovery. You can get two months of this completely for free in the highest quality audio by going to the link in the description and using the code inside the score at checkout. So it's definitely worth trying out and I highly recommend it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next year.